There are lots of different ways to install software on Linux, and each method has its benefits and drawbacks. You might be wondering, what is package management? Or what files work with Linux? So if you're new to Linux and wondering how to go about installing your programs, this video is for you. Join me as I explain the different ways common Linux distros manage program installation and when to use what. The first method to install software is by using a package manager. A package manager is a tool that does exactly that. They usually run via a command line interface and work by connecting to repos. A repo, short for repository, is an online location that stores software. So whenever you ask your package manager to install something, say VLC or Firefox, it searches its repositories to find the right file. This also means that your package manager can keep your software up to date. When you run the update command or run an update via the graphical interface on your Linux distro, the package manager pulls the latest available version of your software. These repositories are updated by distribution maintainers working on your Linux distro, who curate a list of core packages and software from projects and developers. Your distro also likely receives security patches this way. Package managers are great because they're well integrated with your system really fast and provide a great way to keep your software up to date. A couple of issues you might run into are your package manager not having access to the very latest version of your intended software or your intended software at all. And if your package manager can't find your software at all, you can see if the developer has a repo that you can manually add. However, manually adding repos might introduce package and dependency conflicts, so make sure you double check what's being installed and removed when making any changes. The next way to install your software is by using a standalone package file, such as a deb file or an RPM file. This method will feel quite familiar to most Windows and Mac OS users, since you usually download from a website. The first two file types I mentioned, .deb and .rpm, are native package formats for Debian-based and Red Hat-based Linux distros, respectively. They hook into your system's package manager, such as apt or dnf, so dependencies can be handled, but since you've downloaded them from a website, you won't receive updates automatically. To get the latest version of your software, you'll need to manually download a new file. The next type is app image. But before we delve into that, let's check out PCBWay, this video's sponsor. PCBWay is a one-stop shop for PCB prototyping, CNC machining, 3D printing, and more. If you have an idea for a cool project, they do it all. So head on to their site for a free quote, enter your specs, and place an order. It's super easy. And until the 18th of July, 2025, PCBWay is celebrating their 11th anniversary with a huge sale. I reckon that's a really cool milestone, so check out the link in the description to see what coupons and discounts are on offer. And again, thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. The next type, app image, is similar to a standalone package file in that you download it from a website but where they differ is that they don't hook into your package manager. Instead, they are executable, self-contained files that you run from whatever folder they are placed in. These files should come bundled with any extra dependencies that the program needs to run. And yes, any updates will need to be manual. App images are quite good for developers who want to build a single file that can be executed on most common Linux distros. But they usually don't integrate with system menus or shortcuts unless the user adds them manually. Next up are flat packs. In the Linux community, you might run into strong opinions on this method. I'm of the opinion that any method of software installation that works for you is great. That's it. Flat pack is accessible via the command line and it allows you to install software from repos, usually the flat hub. It's another great way for developers to build one app from multiple Linux distros because they don't rely on your system's libraries directly. Instead, they use runtimes. These are shared sets of libraries and dependencies distributed by Flatpak itself. And most Flatpak programs can share these runtimes amongst themselves. Flatpak programs are also sandboxed by default. Imagine your software is running in a box that protects both itself and the rest of your system. Without getting too in-depth, it's great for security and stability. Flatpaks are also updated through repos, so your software stays as recent as possible, depending on what versions are available via the repo. The next method we'll cover is Snap. Snap apps are downloaded from the Snap Store, which is hosted by Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu. Snap is similar to Flatpak 
They also contain most of the required dependencies and run sandboxed from the rest of the system. Updates are automatic, which is great for keeping your software up to date. As well as a command line interface, in Ubuntu you can access the Snap Store via the Ubuntu software app, which is a really friendly way to install your software. The things to keep in mind with Snaps are that apps are sometimes slower to start compared to native packages, and that the Snap Store is fully closed source and controlled by Canonical. For some people who are passionate about open source and a lack of corporate interest in their software, this is an instant deal breaker. But if you're looking for a friendly way to install software, it's a good option. That shouldn't be controversial, but it is. It boils down to preference. The last thing we'll talk about is source code. I'm not gonna go too deep into this because it's not beginner friendly, but sometimes a software developer will provide software in raw code format. These are usually provided in .tar and .gz files and require manual compiling before you can use them. If you come across those, you'll want to follow a guide if you're not familiar with it. These aren't regular zip files that you can just unzip and double click your program. They're very manual. I'll leave it there, but just be aware that this is a thing. So what method should you use? Well, it depends on what the developer of your target software uses. Each of these ways is a valid way to get your software and they'll all work. I prefer using the native package managers because it's a really clean way to source and update your software. I also love that they manage dependencies and conflicts, but you'll end up using whatever the developer of your software offers. That's all for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.